Hey, welcome to the Low Code Show. I'm your host, Russell Youngblood. And in the last video, I showed you how to expose a REST API so that we could use that API in this video. So if you didn't catch that last video, back up, check out number 11. And then in this video, I'm going to show you how to consume that REST API with a mobile application built in OutSystems. Let's do it. So first we'll take a look at the application where we built the API. And if I right click on that products API, it should launch a browser window where we can see the documentation. And here what I'll do is I'll copy the request URL to the clipboard so that we can reference that in the new application that we're building. So I'll go to new application to create a new application. We'll start from scratch and this time we'll create a mobile application. So I'll choose that option, click next. And I'll give it a name, something simple like shopping products. And you can add a description here if you like, or uh, you can add an icon as well. So I'll do that here. Uh, and then click the Create App button to go ahead and create the base for the application. Now, what that will do is it will take us to the screen where we can add the first module. So I'll accept the defaults there, create the first module, and now we can get to work. And in past videos, you might have seen me add data to the application with the data layer, but this time I'm going to choose the logic layer. I'll right click on the REST option and I'll choose Consume REST API. Now there's two ways that we can do that. We can add a single method or multiple methods. And in this case, I'm just gonna choose the single method. And here in this window, you can see where we can copy and paste the URL. I have a tab for headers and authorization as well as a tab to test it. So I'll go back to the body. I will paste the URL here at the top of this little window. And you can see that we can also change the method to get, post, put, uh, delete, whatever you might need there. Uh, but once the URL is there, I can go back to the test tab. We'll click the test button. And in the bottom of the window, you should be able to see the JSON. So if you see lots of information here, you're doing well, I'll click copy response to body, click the finish button, and then that does a good job of creating our endpoint API and an output response that we can use in the application. Now, OutSystems has also created all the structures that you need here uh, for this API. And so I'm going to go ahead and create a new screen. We'll just give it the name products. And this screen will have a list of the different products that are coming from the API. So on the screen, I'll give it a title. We will title this screen products. And then we can go ahead and fetch the data. So I'll right click on the screen, choose to fetch the data. Uh, we're going to rename this data action to products action. And if I expand it, you can see there is one output parameter. I'm also going to change the name of that output parameter as well. And then we're going to have to give it a specific data type. So once again, we'll scroll all the way down, choose list. And then we can point to the structure that was created when we created the API endpoint here. So uh, I can click OK once I've selected that. And then all we need to do is just build out the action to get the data from the API. And then we can use it in the screen. So that's a simple drag and drop over to the flow. I'm going to uh, expand the endpoint down here just a little bit because we will need to add an assigned statement, very similar to what we did in the last video, right? Where we were exposing, this time we're consuming the API and we're going to need to set the output parameter to the response. So I'll once again select that assigned statement. I will choose the output parameter, all products, and then we can set the value to the response. Okay, and it really is just as easy as that. Now, we'll switch back over to the interface layer where we can continue to build out uh, the UI for the screen. And since we have a list of products, we'll drag and drop a list widget to the screen. It's going to need a source, and of course, that's going to come from the API. And you can see it here, all products, so I'll select that. And then I'm going to add a list item. This will uh, have the products um, in the list, right? Now, we do have an error. So I'll double click on that error. It takes me over to the properties of the list action where I need to create an action. So that's fine. I'll create a new action. We can come back and modify that at a later time if we need to. And then for the UI, I think I'll do a quick search and add a card item widget. Uh, I like the structure of this. And then we can go ahead and begin to add the data points from the API. So for example, I can drag and drop the product name. 
Uh, maybe I'd like to add the product description. And then over to the left-hand side, uh, I think it'd be nice if I had a small thumbnail of each one of the products. So I'll drag and drop the image widget. We'll change the type. This is going to need to be uh, URL. It's going to point to a URL in the database, and then we can map it to the picture that should come from the database. Now, uh, this looks pretty good. One more thing, I need to go ahead and change this to anonymous access so that we don't have to log in to actually get to the screen. And then we'll go ahead and publish the changes and we'll take a look at what it looks like in the browser. Okay, now that that's complete, we'll go ahead and launch the application in the browser. And we should be able to see a list of all the products we should be able to see the title of each product or the name and the description, as well as a small thumbnail image in the screen. Okay, one more thing worth noting here. If we navigate to Service Center in this module, you will see an Integrations tab, and here we can find all of the SOAP and the rest, and even SAP connection information. Uh, so that's one thing to note. And then also, uh, in Service Center, if you navigate to the monitoring section, you'll also find an integrations tab here where you can see the log files that have been logging anything to do with the integrations in our module. Hey, thanks so much for watching this YouTube video. If you liked what you saw, please subscribe to The Low Code Show on YouTube. You can also follow at twitter.com, The Low Code Show, and of course, facebook.com, The Low Code Show.